All right, guys, with week nine of the NFL slate now wraps up in the books, we are officially over halfway through the NFL season. I can't believe that how fast this 2022 NFL season is going by, but we have a lot to break down today. So many headlines that we have to go to. And with week nine, that was my first week uh, actually putting out content for my sleeper partnership. So if you are here uh, from sleeper, welcome to the personal channel. Very happy to have you. If not, uh, if you're a legacy member, go out, uh, go check out sleeper, go check out my partnership with them, putting out the uh, short form video content over there. Uh, but both of you guys very happy to have you here on this wonderful tuesday after week nine hit that like button hit that subscribe button over there they're both very free and i will see you after the intro All right, guys, with week nine, it was a wild week. Not so much with what happened on the field, but more so with what happened off the field. Normally, I talk about how important waiver wires is. This is going to be one of the most driest waiver wire sessions we've ever had um, on this channel. Uh, very, very few uh, slim pickings from the waiver wire. And also, given that there are six teams on by, a little bit limited uh, actual player performances to recap. So we get to go and dive into the absolute insanity that's been prevalating uh, through the NFL off the field. So with that being said, let's jump into our first headline here. We're going to talk about Mixon's record-breaking day. Uh, five total touchdowns against the Carolina Panthers. That was the eighth best performance in PPR history in NFL fantasy football. Definitely was that week winning performance. And anyone who had stuck by Mixon's side through some of that um, inefficiency on the ground through weeks one through eight, you certainly were rewarded here. Um, Truly insane what the Bengals and Mixon did this past week. Now, obviously, this is without Jamar Chase. This is against a tanking Carolina Panthers team. I don't know if we're going to expect this sort of multi-touchdown, just absolutely insane performance from Mixon's going forward. We've talked ad nauseum here about how uh, the way Zach Taylor has changed this offense uh, throughout the first couple games. Joe Burrow was taking an average of over 25 uh, snaps under center, trying to get a more balanced uh, run and passing game. And then obviously that resulted in a loss to the Steelers and then to the Cowboys. And then eventually they shifted their offense to what we saw more towards the end of last year, um, where Joe Burrow is averaging, I believe, three and a half snaps under center, really uh, bringing him back, putting him in the shotgun. They were the highest percentage of uh, pass plays in a neutral game script of any NFL team. Uh, but obviously, that was with Jamar Chase on the field. So um, with Jamar Chase continuing to be sidelined with that hip injury, we're going to see a huge involvement from Joe Mix. We're going to see a huge involvement of the run game and also get T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd more involved. But obviously, Jamar Chase is the most dynamic, dynamic offensive weapon uh, on that roster. So uh, I can't wait to see... Um, what happens when Jamar gets back, but just, you know, if you think that Mixon's going to be a guy that's going to lead you to the promised land in the playoffs, I'm going to be a little bit of downer and say probably not, as uh, Jamar Chase will be hopefully back um, for that stretch run. Um, but talking about another player that had another incredible game, it's going to be Justin Fields. And over the past... Uh, over the past three weeks, Justin Fields has been a top five quarterback finishing QB7, QB5, and then it's the past week QB1 against the Dolphins defense, which is not a bad defense, but um, it seems that it took a little while to figure out this offense, and that's understandable. There was a huge renovation of the overall roster. Matt Eberflus came in, first time being a head coach, uh, a huge overhaul of the GM and uh, coaching positions. So, I mean, I guess I'm not that surprised that it took a while for them to find their footing, but boy, they've really leaned into Justin Fields' uh, strengths, uh, really drawing up a ton of design runs for him, and Justin Fields just looks confident in the pocket. This uh, in the pocket, outside of the pocket, scrambling, making decisions. He's actually moving through progressions, which is something we weren't seeing in the first few games. We would see him uh, look to his first progression and either airmail it or he would just take the sack or scramble. Uh, now he's actually putting through progressions, making thought process, reading defenses, um, which is obviously the progression you want to see from a young quarterback. Uh, and this is why we strongly encourage on this channel to pick up Justin Fields prior to last week um, before this insane breakout because as of now... Um, there's absolutely zero way you'll be able to take Justin Fields off the uh, waivers going forward, and he could be one of those league-winning quarterbacks um, down the stretch run, especially if you're struggling uh, with a Matt Stafford, with a Russell Wilson, with a Aaron Rodgers, with a Lamar Jackson without his receiving options. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, 
So uh, Justin Fields, absolutely tremendous. 179 yards on the ground, uh, four total TDs. The dude's an absolute beast. And it looks like uh, the Bears have found their QB of the future. Um, let's talk about another QB that might ha- not have had the best debut, which is going to be Malik Willis uh, due to uh, injury and illness to Ryan Tannehill. Malik Willis has been thrown into starting the past two games, last week against uh, Houston and this week against the Kansas City Chiefs, and he hasn't looked super great. He has his moments of brilliance, um, but I don't know if the jury is completely out on Malik Willis just yet. He's still very young. He is still very, very raw, and he was a project uh, which a lot of NFL players uh, and a lot of NFL GMs knew coming into the season. That's why he fell to the third round in the draft, Um, and with the way that this team has been playing uh, with the Titans currently winning the AFC South as it stands. And you have Derrick Henry as a runner. You have him being an absolute monster. Uh, it seems Mike Rabel was just content to let the offense really run through Mike Rabel, or sorry, run through uh, Derrick Henry, let the defense control the game, lean into their strengths, not tax uh, Malik Willis too much. And that's why we only saw him complete about five passes. He only had a few designed runs. Um, he was more of a decoy. I was going to say game manager, but he really didn't manage the game. I generally can't. Uh, say that if Derrick Henry lined up under center every snap, there would have been uh, a material difference in the way these games have played out just with how much they ran the offense uh, through the run game with Derrick Henry, with Andrew Hilliard. Um, But with Malik Willis, I've seen moments of brilliance, moments of excellence. He still is that insane athlete that his athleticism can be matched by some of the top tier guys like a Lamar Jackson. So if he can mature a little bit, can work through uh, the rest of the season, work through his progressions, work on his accuracy, work on his decision making, I think he, he should make a fine NFL starter because the traits, the raw talent is definitely there. Um, but again, through these two games, let's not take it super hard over here. Um, just because Mike Vrabel is severely limiting uh, the actual involvement of Malik Willis in the offense, and for good reason. Um, There's nothing against Mike, uh, Mike Vrabel. He is an excellent coach, uh, should be a coach of the year candidate, um, but he knows the strengths of this team, and he doesn't want to tax um, Malik Willis too much at this point. Um, number three, or sorry, number four here that I want to talk about uh, getting more and more off field is going to be, as of yesterday, Frank Reich is hired, and then they named Jeff Saturday the coach. Uh, again, We were going on and on about how the Indianapolis Colts, uh, all of their assets are kind of on a stock downtrend right now because with Sam Sam Ellinger going in at quarterback with uh, their tremendous losses, um, with some of the more embarrassing losses that they suffered, it seems like, you know, Chris Ballard and Jim Ursay and the brass up there in Indianapolis have just waved the white flag and just given, uh, given up on this season. But now this is this is truly the white white flag. After they extended Frank Reich through the 2026 season, letting him go this early means that this team is in full rebuild. I think they're going to be a top five pick, uh, and they'll be a, a prime candidate for a C.J. Stroud or a Will Levis. Um, I don't think they're going to get into that uh, a number one overall pick range, uh, but they can certainly get a nice consolation prize as a C.J. Stroud or a Will Levis just because going through uh, veteran free agency for a lot of those quarterbacks has proven very, very harmful uh, to the organization as a whole. Um, again, this could go to one of two ways. The first way I could see with the firing Frank Reich is that Jonathan Taylor, uh, with his injuries, like they could just shut him down. Michael Pittman is not being involved in the offense whatsoever, uh, and this might just be even more uh, red flags around the offense. And we just completely get rid of this. Uh, we completely just avoid Colts assets for the rest of the year. Um, the other way is just, again, they're not going to get back to what our preseason hype had dictated to Michael Pittman and Jonathan Taylor. However, you know, with the firing of Frank Reich, maybe Jeff Saturday comes in and says, okay, listen, Sam Ellinger, you're not the quarterback that we can uh, win games with. We're going to put Matt Ryan back in. We're going to actually use Nick Foles, who has NFL experience. And then I would give a slight upgrade to Michael Pittman. Um, and Jonathan Taylor, and I think overall those two quarterbacks have a better uh, outlook for the offense rather than Sam Ellinger. But we'll have to see. As of this recording right now, the court starting quarterback uh, has not been named. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I think they have a better chance to win with either Matt Ryan or with um, Mr. Foles. And but if Sam Ellinger continues to be the quarterback, especially behind this offensive line, that is the absolute. It's it's horrible. Like this offensive line needs to 
this this year's a wash most because of the offensive line. Um, it's the highest paid offensive line in the NFL, and they are one of the worst graded offensive lines, even with having stars like Quinn and Nelson on the roster. Uh, I don't know what went wrong uh, in that offensive line room, but if they continue to perform the way they do, um, no matter who's under quarterback, uh, under center, it could be Patrick Mahomes. Uh, nothing is just really going to happen. So very, very mediocre outlook for the Colts the rest of the year, especially after the firing of Frank Reich. Um, also, Another topic I want to talk about, uh, Green Bay Packers. Yeah, they're dead. Uh, I mean, the injuries are just mounting. Romeo Dobbs, a uh, high ankle sprain. That's typically a four- to six-week injury. I have, we haven't gotten the prognosis yet. Uh, Rashawn Gary is out for the season with a torn ACL. Uh, Aaron Jones also has a high ankle sprain, which is going to be another four-week prognosis. Uh, Christian Watson has had a second concussion in the span of one week. Um, so I, I don't understand. Matt LaFleur looks completely lost out there. Uh, Aaron Rodgers might retire before the end of the season. Uh, he has zero faith in this offense, zero faith in any of his weapons. Um, there's not a single asset on this offense that can marginally come close to putting up a good game. I thought against this 31st ranked Detroit run defense, Aaron Jones or AJ Dillon could find a way to get the, uh, to get the rock on the ground and actually have an efficient run game. And when you can't do that against the Detroit defense, I, I just don't know what to tell you. Um, Clearly, this team is unmotivated. The locker room, in my humble opinion, as a um, lazy uh, fantasy football analyst, uh, is completely lost. And I think the season is now wash, and the prospects of a postseason probably are out the window at this point. Um, again, a couple more headlines I want to touch on. Uh, the Josh Allen injury. Um, that's going to be a very crucial injury to monitor. Uh, the UCL nerve is very, very important, um, especially when it comes to athletics. I know this personally. I have had a UCL injury on uh, my right arm here, um, and I can tell you it's not fun. I had to get surgery on it, and mine was uh, probably a lot worse to the standpoint than what uh, Josh Allen is currently dealing with, but uh, it does affect uh, – UCL mostly affects these two fingers right here and your ability to grip. Um, so grip strength will be a problem. So – if this continues to persist, I expect him to be fumbling the ball quite a bit more because your grip strength is greatly affected uh, by your UCL. And also, uh, it is very uncomfortable because when you straighten out your arm or when you bend your arm, or when you make exaggerated mo movements, especially when it goes through a full throwing motion like this and you extend and that um, that nerve tendon right here extends fully, you can generally feel... Um, that if there's any sort of damage there, it'll send shock waves down your forearm. It is incredibly uncomfortable and incredibly, uh, I, I see is really, really detrimental to anyone playing this athlete, especially a person who's doing this motion over and over and over. Something very, very crucial to uh, take a look out for just because I personally know it is a devastating injury to deal with. Um, and finally, the last thing we're talking about, Lamar Jackson. Um, Again, a guy that we thought MVP candidate, super high coming out of week two, week three, back-to-back 40-point -back performances. However, despite his ability as a dual-threat quarterback and his ability to run the ball and be tremendous on the ground, he cannot continue this running success if there's no passing game. Rashad Bateman is now out for the rest of the season. They signed Deshaun Jackson, they signed Deshaun Jackson but I don't think that's a material upgrade um, over the current options in Demarcus Robinson, Devin DuVernay, and James Prochet. Um, Isaiah likely has taken a little bit of a step forward, but Mark Andrews is obviously uh, irreplaceable when it comes to the tight end position. So this is someone that I'm really wary of Lamar Jackson's prospects for the rest of the season, just based on the fact that um, he can't sustain his entire uh, entire production or the projected points uh, of the rest of the season without a passing game. Yeah, I know he's dynamic as a runner, and that's where he gets a lot of his fantasy points, but that happens because he can open up the field due to the passing game, does have weapons down the field uh, to make sure that those running lanes are open. And yes, um, we saw even last night against the Saints how dynamic he is, and he can go off for these incre incredible runs, and he breaks tackles and all this stuff, but uh, there's only so much you can do that if you're not throwing the ball downfield. So until um, maybe they sign OBJ, maybe they figure out something else in the passing game, maybe Devin DuVernay takes a step up, maybe Deshaun Jackson is more involved in the offense, but until I see that, it's um, I'm approaching Lamar Jackson with just a little bit more trepidation than normal. So. That was a ton of headlines that we had to cover, but a lot of topics uh, around the NFL that I really wanted to cover. So let's go ahead and jump into our studs. Uh, obviously, number one has to be Joe Mixon with 53.1 fantasy points in a half PPR setting. Uh, like I said, eighth highest PPR uh, uh, performance in history. Talked about how insane this was. Yeah, definitely won you some weeks. Um, 
Number two, Justin Fields, 42.7 points. He looks absolutely dynamic running this offense, getting in designed runs. Uh, looks a lot more confidence, especially against a competent defense in the Miami Dolphins. Uh, so Justin Fields could be a league winner going forward. Uh, all your fab. All your, if, he's on, if he's still on the waiver wires, which I doubt he is, just spend all your fab on him. Um, there's not too many quarterbacks that I like rest of season more than Justin Fields. And we saw that he um, is making good decisions, throwing the ball well uh, down the field to Darnell Mooney, to Cole Komet. Um, and I think Chase Claypool will only get more involved in this offense and open up more running lanes. As we talked to Lamar Jackson, uh, Chase Claypool as a big body threat down the field will continue to open up some running lanes for uh, Justin Fields. Number three, Devontae Adams. This just goes to prove, uh, goes to show how talented Devontae Adams is because the Raiders are an absolute nightmare of a football club uh, at the moment. Um, Derek Carr is not performing anywhere close to what he had last year. The defense is taking major steps back. Chandler Jones, uh, really a regression from what uh, he was expected to be uh, coming into the season. But Devontae Adams still put up 31.6 points and definitely uh, helped you on your way to winning some weeks was just uh, multiple TDs and just insanely uh, dominant performance. Uh, so even when we even when uh, Rome is falling around Devonte Adams, he will still put up for fantasy. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, this dude is just good at the football. Thirty four point one points. Um, the best quarterback in the NFL, in my opinion. Uh, maybe not so much for fantasy because of the dual threat ability. He doesn't run as much. But again, we've discussed ad nauseum here. Uh, for my money, uh, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL in any situation, and it's not even close. Don't I'm taking him over Brady, Rodgers, Allen, Herbert, Burrow. Uh, any one of them. It, it's clear in my mind that Patrick Mahomes is just the best quarterback in the NFL, and there's, there's no two ways about it, and I'm not a Chiefs fan, but I can recognize get, generational greatness and just enjoy watching Mahomes while you can because the things he does uh, under center are special. And number five is going to be Kenneth Walker with 26.4 fantasy points, showing us that zero RB was definitely the strategy this year. Um, definitely a lot of these guys, uh, Kenneth Walker, 26 points. And we'll talk about Travis Etienne as well from the running back dead zone, uh, 25.6 points. Uh, these guys are really making a name for themselves. Um, there is gold to be found deeper down the draft roster. So uh, I guess... Zero RB truthers are just loving the season, and Kenneth Walker continues to be on an absolute tear uh, from that game up in Seattle. Definitely uh, a boon benefiting from uh, Geno Smith's uh, resurgence play, but Seattle Seattle's just a fun team to watch, and Kenneth Walker is a, a tremendous running back, one of the best pure runners. I call him Nick Chubb Light because maybe he's not as involved in the passing game as a Brees Hall is, but the way he runs, the way he runs with power, how good he is on the ground, breaking tackles, it's fun to watch. He makes running the football. Every run of his is just exciting. Um, so some other relevant mentions is uh, Tua, um, 24.1 points. Um, again, was in that shootout with the Bears and Justin Fields. Again, when he has Waddle and uh, Tyreek on the outside, he's going to have tons of options to get the ball downfield. Uh, it's been an amazing season for Tua, and I expect it to continue. Austin Eckler is just doing Austin Eckler things, especially with Keenan, Mike Williams, Jalen Guyton. So many offensive weapons are injured and out for uh, the Chargers. Austin Eckler is a necessary facet to that offense, and they get it out a very cheeky win over the Falcons, and Austin Eckler finishes with 20.6 points. Um, Travis Etienne, we've already talked about, uh, is the heart and soul of that Jaguars offense um, and is just putting up amazing performance out of, after amazing performance and is matchup proof at this point. Uh, Tyreek Hill uh, goes off for over 100 yards and a touchdown, 23.8 points. Uh, definitely gave you a good game this week uh, against a very, very uh, abysmal Bears defense after they got rid of Robert Quinn and Rokon Smith. Derrick Henry, especially with uh, Ryan Tannehill out, is going to be... Um, necessary to the titans any sort of uh, offensive action on the titans so uh he finds the end zone finds 23.5 points uh is definitely has no signs of slowing down despite being one of the older running backs in the league but this dude is just a a, a man among boys and a truly special talent when it comes to the running back position cooper cup in the same vein as Devontae Adams. Rome is burning down all around him, but he's still going to get you 22.8 points. Uh, Matthew Stafford, hyper target Cooper Cup, and just the way he is so efficient in route running, he is the best route runner uh, in the in, in the NFL, bar none. Uh, so loving uh, the fact that Cooper Cup is just so consistent. Justin Jefferson, uh, also in a very interesting game, but he manages to get his uh, 22.0 uh, points. Um, so Justin Jefferson is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL from a talent uh, standpoint. 
and uh, Kirk Cousins in prime time and not in prime time is going to feed Justin Jefferson the ball early and often. And finally, we had our MVP of the Thursday night game in Dallas Goddard, tied in one on the week, amassing over 20.0 points. So uh, great game from Dallas Goddard. And, you know, again, going to show that with the Eagles, they can, you know, there's they have six different ways to gut a fish there, uh, whether they can run it, run it down your throats. They got Devontae Smith as a speedster. They have A.J. Brown just as the dominant um, high point uh, ball catcher. Or you can just go uh, and just death by a thousand cuts with Dallas Goddard moving it eight yards down the field at a time. So that's going to wrap up our stud section. Let's talk about the duds. Uh, DeAndre Swift, 6.5 points. Uh, he clearly is just something wrong with him. He's not healthy. Um, he's lacking some sort of health, uh, not back to 100%, 100%. He had less than five carries. Um, we'll have to monitor how he goes throughout practice, but i um, very concerned with DeAndre Swift's outlook as he has not been able to shake the injury-prone label. Uh, DJ Moore, uh, despite a great week last week and comes back kind of back down to earth, uh, the Panthers offense as a whole looked abysmal against the Bengals and they are a pretty good defense. Uh, so that's not unsurprising. Uh, however, PJ Walker, after a great game last week, uh, finishes with negative fantasy points this week and they actually put Baker Mayfield, uh, back in. So most, most assets all over the, um, Panthers, uh, Offensive line, it was just abysmal. Deonta Foreman, after his 30.1 week last week, he only got 3.1 weeks, a tenth of what he was able to produce. So I know a lot of people, including myself, started him and uh, suffered greatly for it. Uh, so the Panthers, as a whole, were just really uh, disappointing. And I think this is going to be a sign of things to come as they continue to tank for their number one overall pick. Uh, David Montgomery, in a game in which your team puts up 32 points and you are the lead running back, um, very surprising to finish with less than five fantasy points. Uh, the lead rusher for that team was Justin Fields. And when you have a dynamic uh, quarterback who can run from the position as Justin Fields, then you don't you will not find uh, as involvement with the running back position. We saw this with David Montgomery. Uh, same thing can be said for um, Josh Allen and the Bills, as Josh Allen is probably the best runner on that team. So we see kind of a downgrade from uh, Devin Singletary when it comes to that standpoint. So David Montgomery, his utilization is there. His offensive snap share is there. He's going to be utilizing the offense, and you have to play him, but you are going to um, end up with weeks such as this where all the offense kind of goes through Justin Fields. Uh, number four, Kyle Pitts. My man, he's, you know, he earns a VIP penthouse suite on this duds list for a guy that was drafted in the third round with so many people hyping him up coming out. Um, it's just, there's no offensive utilization for the Falcons that are really going to um, put him in a place to succeed. Uh, they rarely throw the ball. Um, and I can't remember the last time Marks Mariota got above 20 pass attempts in a game. So despite having a decent offensive pie, um, a, de a decent target share, there's just not enough of an offensive passing pie uh, that, Kyle Pitts can really, you know, make anything of relevance out of. Um, and last but not least, we got to talk about Aaron Jones. Obviously, the high ankle, sp ankle sprain injured him, but this is a guy that we're projecting as a top five player, uh, running back upside on the week against his 31st ranked Detroit defense. And then just, but things in um, Green Bay are just absolutely abysmal right now. It's, it's, it, it's a frustrating to watch uh, an offense that's been so high powered and so good for fantasy over the past few years, just absolutely uh, crumble and fall apart. Um, again, I think part of this has to do with the fact that the locker room is not buying in. They are so unmotivated. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is well liked in that locker room. Um, and, you know, I, I can't find anyone that really wants to buy into this team. Uh, so I guess not even from a, metric standpoint or statistic standpoint but i just have to go off that gut feeling that you know things are not going well in green bay and when you have a when you have players that are unmotivated players that don't want to be there players that you know couldn't care less about the people that they're playing for um and there's animosity between your teammates um you're not going to perform well on the field look at teams that look at Kirk Cousins, Mr. Dancing on the Plane with sunglasses and chains. Yeah, he might be kind of a cringe dude, but obviously the offense likes him. Obviously they buy into what he is, and you can't discount locker room culture when it comes to a guy like that. So maybe Kirk Cousins, a uh, better quarterback than we anticipated. So other honorable mentions are Dean Jackson, 4.6 points. We talked about how horrible uh, the Colts offensive line is and what um, we can expect from the Colts going forward now that they've hired Jeff Saturday as their coach. Uh, Tyler Boyd, 6.9 points. Um, obviously a disappointing game for Tyler Boyd, but and we, we and no one, I promise you, no one predicted all the offense running through Joe Mixon for the um, 
Bengals, but that's just what happened on this random Saturday. I don't want to talk about process. Process is BS. I don't want to say, oh, well, the process was there, so my analysis is right. It wasn't right. It wasn't. So Tyler Boyd, as though he was a smash start in my opinion, didn't do well. 6.9 points. That's just the way you got to, you know, lick your wounds, take your losses, move on to the next week. And we'll obviously, as we evaluate the Bengals for next week, we'll understand that there's going to be more of a, a focus on the run game. And maybe, maybe Tyler Boyd wasn't the upside play that we thought he was. Um, Gabe Davis, uh, time to kind of admit that Gabe Davis might not be the guy that we thought coming into the season. I was personally quite kind of low on Gabe Davis. Um, but a lot of people thought he was, you know, going to be this uh, insane breakout wide receiver. I, um, again, he's had some insane games. He's a high upside flex play, but he's very volatile and not consistent fantasy play. And obviously with the Josh Allen industry injury that we described earlier, uh, makes me very, very uh, scared for Gabe Davis as he's a down the field threat. And we talked about that throwing motion. It's hard to really launch, really um, put a lot of effort and energy and power behind those throws when you have that kind of damage to your elbow uh, ligament and nerve. Um, so Gabe Davis, in my mind, is a very, very uh, dicey play going forward. Tyler Higby, absolutely goosed. Um, yeah, just sucks for fantasy. The Rams have taken not one, not two, not three, but like five steps back on the offensive side. Um, so Jacoby, uh, sorry, so Tyler Higby, getting a little ahead of myself there. Tyler Higby, absolutely goose. And that was very frustrating for people who thought they had a decent matchup there and a guy who's been, you know, pretty good for fantasy so far. Jacoby Myers, uh, 4.9 points. Um, again, there's nothing really going on offensively uh, through the um, New England Patriots. Uh, they got a the score was a little misleading as I did get a defensive score uh, in there to end out the game. And also Bill Belichick, he just loves to run the ball and Mondre Stevenson might only be the only startable fa- asset for fantasy when it comes uh, to the New England Patriots going forward. Um, Mike Evans, uh, same vein as um, Tyler Higby and the Rams offense, where it's just uh, the, with the offensive line was of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, things have just been, you know, increasingly uh, dismal. So, not the, not the team we expect to come in. Brady obviously has a lot of personal issues that he's dealing with. Uh, it's hard to separate personal and professional. Um, as a former athlete, uh, it's hard to turn off your brain when something uh, personally big impacts you like that. So I, I truly imagine um, that's something that's going on here. Uh, but Mike Evans is talented. It's just the fact that the offensive line is not there. The run game is atrocious, um, and it's hard. Um, it's going to making it hard for Tom Brady to uh, continually uh, put out good production, and that obviously negatively impacts our wide receivers, including Mike Evans. Uh, Romeo Dobbs left the game with a high ankle sprain. Um, 2.3 points. Aaron Rodgers sucks as a quarterback. Not much said there. I'm not even touching uh, any Packers wide receivers for the rest of the year. And finally, Devonta Smith, 3.2 points. Um, can't really get mad at Devonta. They won the game. Uh, they are 8-0. The Eagles are 8-0. And there's just, we talked about this, there's just too many mouths to feed. Sometimes they'll have a good game. Sometimes he won't have a good game. But there's, um, we've seen every single Eagles asset have good games and bad games just because there's so many good players between A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard, uh, Miles Sanders, and Jalen Hurts that, you know, they can't all be amazing for fantasy every single week. And unfortunately, Devontae Smith was the product of um, a down game this week as a lot of the offense went through Dallas Goddard and the rushing game. So those that's going to wrap up our studs. Let's jump quickly on the waivers. And honestly, this is one of the most, this waiver section is drier than Sahara. Like there's really nothing that you want to pick up here. Um, so I'm going to mention a couple wide receivers. Uh, Terrace Marshall Jr., a guy that's still getting a tremendous amount of targets in this um, Panthers offense. So if you really need a, Desperation start at um, wide receiver. Terrace Marshall is a guy that I would feel comfortable picking up and just stashing on your bench. Um, now that Christian McCaffrey's gone, now that Robbie Anderson's gone, it's DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall, and Dante Foreman slash Chuba Hubbard. So um, he has looked good the past couple weeks. He has had the bulk of the target share of the past two weeks. So a guy um, that if you're really in desperation start, he's a guy that I will start. Uh, number two, uh, now that Odell Jet Beckham Jr. is cleared to play football again, he's been uh, rumored to go to four different teams. That's the Bills, the Packers, the Giants, and the Cowboys, I believe. Or sorry, it's Bills, Ravens, Giants, Cowboys. Um, one of those two statements was correct. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but... Um, Obviously, uber-talented uh, wide receiver. Coming back from the ACL, might need some time. Um, 
Unfortunately, just the way the injury designation right now is on platforms, he cannot be slotted into an IR spot. So if you have an extra bench spot, um, he is a guy that you could certainly stash and hope that he comes and plays for a dynamic offense. Obviously, the ideal spots for him to go would be the Ravens or the uh, Cowboys at this point. Uh, finally, finally, Wandell Robinson probably going to be on waivers just because he had a pretty bad week eight and then he had a, was bought on buy for week nine. Um, but without Kadarius Tony there uh, and the Giants playing above expectations. I think Wandell Robinson will be a sneaky good play for the rest of the season. So go ahead, grab Wandale off a waiver, throw him and stash him on your bench as a good wide receiver uh, flex option. Um, and literally, I can't tell you another person to play off. Like normally I try to get five here. I'm stopping after three because anything after this is just going to be me talking out of my behind because I can't in good conscious recommend you uh, to pick up anyone else. Um, I will say there are two running backs that played well that, probably got double digit fantasy points in your roster um, are on your waiver this week. And that's Raheem Blackshear and Kenneth Gainwell. Don't pick up either of them. Uh, Raheem Blackshear for the Panthers, obviously uh, Chuba Hubbard is going to come back into the fold at some point. And he's obviously way more talented than both Blackshear and Deonta Foreman. And Kenneth Gainwell only gets involved in the run game and the touchdown game when you're blowing out abysmal teams like the Houston Texans. So don't waste your fab on either of those players. So, um, managed to get to 30 minutes because we spent 15 minutes talking about headlines and all that fun stuff. But hopefully we gave you a ton of good content to dissect here uh, halfway through the season. So hopefully you're in a position to make a playoff push. Uh, Take what we said here, apply it to your teams, and I will see you back in a couple days to preview week 10.